righty then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Give do it better. All righty then. AJ. All righty then. All righty then. Here we go. Hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you're going to take home with you. No. Nope. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't have to leave your house. But there was something truly special about making that trip, picking a movie out by hand, and driving home with your head out the window. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies, from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two dudes who love animals as much as our main character, Sean Pryor and AJ Van Zodek. Are ya? I love them, but I'm still not vegetarian. Yeah, so exactly. I'm with you, man. Uh, I, love I do them. love all animals. I love them. I, I wish them the best. Yep. Bro, Until but, but I'm have, hungry. But have you seen Food Inc., bro? <laughs> nope. Let me tell you about <laughs> well, there's I'm your not problem. going to. <laughs> I made the mistake of watching that about yeah. 10 years ago, and guess who went vegetarian for about yeah. eight and a half years? Yep. Me, because I'm an impressionable kid. <laughs> and, and, but, you, but you made it back, I think. I made it right? back. I found a middle ground. I used to eat about 10 servings of meat a day, and then for about nine <laughs> years I ate no meat a day. Now I'm like one and a half servings a day. That's right where you should be. That's well, about it's right like, where you should have be. you seen Food, Inc.? And then it's like, have you seen Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives? Right. I think that's <laughs> a great point. That's that's what that's what the calibration is. Have you been to Texas? Yeah. Have, have you, you ever know? worn your white Oakleys backwards <laughs> on your head? <laughs> Got to. <laughs> <laughs> have you? <laughs> <laughs> you will love me after that. <laughs> well, 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 boys, on this episode, we discuss a movie that had one sequel and then led to the worst spinoff movie ever made in or 2009, a movie that was the first lead role for Jim Carrey, the spark for a rocket ship of a year for this brilliant actor, a movie that millennials are desperately trying to cancel, apparently. We're, of course, talking about 1994's Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. All righty then. <laughs> And for those looking to find this movie as of the recording of this episode in early September 22, it uh, looks like you got a purchase. But I had something weird to happen to me. I was on Amazon and it was like, do you want to rent this for three ninety nine? I was like, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I hit it, even though I own the DVD. I was like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I hit yes on it. And then it's like, it turns out it's only 99 cents. <gasps> Do you still want to rent it? I was like, yeah. Why, are you <laughs> yeah. why is that a deterrent? And I still don't know why it was 99 cents, but it was. I and think I caught it on the same day, and it was either uh, rent it for 99 cents or buy it for 3.99, which is a, a normal rental Weird. price. So I bought it. Congrats, I was going to say, man. but but I still rented it. <laughs> I rented it I twice, actually. I'll explain to you later, but I also rented it twice, even though I own the DVD. I meant so. frick it. I, I meant frick it. Frick it. So in order to properly dissect and review this movie with a modern eye, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, let's start with you. Tell us the first time you saw this movie and what your nostalgic rating is. This movie was crack to a kid like me. Uh-huh. Duh. And mo- like to anybody, like you thinking back, I think this is the most important thing that any adult can say about this movie is that thinking back, I cringe at the thought of me reenacting any of this (laughs) because I certainly did. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And you just constantly thought you were funny. And 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 then I think about, now I think about if I were to watch a kid do that, I'm surprised I didn't get beat up more by my parents. So You surprised you weren't a punchable face. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Of your class. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I and it just it just makes you cringe. You look back on yourself and you are like, "Yep, I that was terrible," but I did love the movie and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And this is one of those movies that you think about that when you are watching it, you don't necessarily get everything, but it's okay because Jim Carrey is just there to carry your feeble mind through the entirety of it. And so, that being said, as a kid watching this movie, this this is a nine point two. Yeah. 
Sean, what about you, man? I'm there with you. I'm gonna go nine as well. Uh, it 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 was everything I re I I wanted to be this character. I just yeah. did it. I did it as like a fail safe for myself, just like to try and find who I was in school. Just like I I guess I'll just be obnoxious <laughs> and and definitely funny to my peers. Um, I'm sure it was insufferable, and I'm sure uh, I wasn't. But it, <laughs> yeah, uh, nine, yeah, for sure. It, I, this, it was one of the best movies ever made. I'm I'm a nine point five. This was I had a unique situation happen to me. I went and saw Dumb and Dumber in the theater. Ooh. Immediately was like, who is Jim Carrey? Oh my god! And then went to the went to Blockbuster like after coming out of the theater, rented The Mask and Ace Ventura: Pet Detective, oh, and just went. Pew, pew, with both of those, and it was just like inject Jim Carrey into my veins right now. Oh my yeah, gosh. And, and, and and so I think we ultimately ended up buying all three of those on VHS. Like within, my parents were like, "Oh no, this is going to be one they go back and rent every day. <laughs> <coughs> we need to buy all three of these." Yeah. So we bought this on VHS and just wore it out. Me and my brother. I'm nine point five. This movie was chosen directly by our top tier executive producer David Gould. Here's what he had to say. If you were to ask what actor defined my childhood, it would have to be Jim Carrey. His physical comedy and over-the-top antics spoke so profoundly to my young, impressionable mind. Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, In Living Color, and the list goes on. I had to consume them all. But no movie clicked with me more than Ace Ventura Pet Detective. As a child, it was the perfect balance of over-exaggerated comedy that I could understand and jokes that would go over my head but make my dad laugh. I wanted the crazy hair, Hawaiian shirts, and penguins living in my freezer. I wore out our bootlegged, ripped VHS copy of this film so I could learn every quote for the playground school, and although against my mother's wishes, even church. With all that said, I love this film so much, my nostalgic rating is a 10. Wow. Fellas, that takes <laughs> us... got to be so high. Fellas, that takes us to a 9.42 for a nostalgic rating, which is now our number one nostalgic wow. rating. That beats out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Goonies for the top spot nostalgic rating of any movie we've ever done. Uh, Dang. Amazing. That's that's and we do say that we don't put a lot of stock in right. nostalgic rating, right. but like that's worth talking about. Oh yeah. Right yeah for sure. <laughs> wow. Our sponsor, Cedar Ridge Distillery, you know <laughs> who they are. We love them. They are amazing. They are the best whiskey distiller in the world as far as we are concerned. If you bought a bottle, you know this. We just saw an article the other day uh, that they shared from GoBourbon.com, and they pointed out an insane fact that Cedar Ridge is the only craft distillery in America to be a state's number one overall best-selling whiskey. Wow. Just to put that into perspective, here's the quote. In 49 states, a major distillery produces the number one best-selling bourbon in the state. In many cases, this is Jim Beam, Maker's Mark, Jack Daniels. But that is not the case in Iowa, where Cedar Ridge has been the number one for two straight years, outselling the nearest major distillery competitor by some 35%. Jack yeah. and Jim, they're coming for you. Yeah, yeah, suck it. We get high on our own supply. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tennessee. Sorry, Tennessee. Sorry, Kentucky. Eat Iowa. it, Chris Stapleton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David Allen Coe, please. Oh, David George, Allen. Sorry, Eat George it, David. Jones. Well, technically. Yeah, George Jones, really. <laughs> Eat it, George. <laughs> so you heard it here first. If you've been listening to this podcast, we've been talking about Cedar Ridge Whiskey, telling you they're the best in the world. First Iowa, next your state, next the freaking world. Check them out. Stop by a liquor store near you to pick some up. If your store doesn't have it, you can pester them incessantly until they get some, or you can order a bottle directly online at cedarridgewhiskey.com. Stop by their website. Add them on social media. Go check them out in Swisher. I was in Illinois last night playing a gig, and I let some of the fellas have some, and they're like, this is amazing. Yeah, you I'm bet. Like, well, then you just go get some at cedarridgewhiskey.com. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Put that in your glass and sip it. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like that a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. So next it's time to learn all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean's got us hooked up. What do you got, man? Produced by James G. Robinson. Story by Jack Bernstein or Bernstein. I don't know. <laughs> Screenplay by Tom <laughs> Shattuck and Jack Bernstein or Bernstein. Cin <laughs> cinematography by Julio McCat. Um <laughs> Do you have that in your notes <laughs> that you were going to say that? or did you No, just I that? just got it. Right, cool. I like that. 
Um, Julio McDowd. Go ahead. Julio McCat, the uh, cinematography. He also did Wedding Crashers, kind of fun <laughs> movie, and Home Alone. Wow. Uh, <laughs> music by Ira Newborn, edited by Don Zimmerman, and directed by Tom Shadyak or Shadik. Shad Shadyak. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Carrey, Courtney Cox, Sean Young, Tone Loke, John Capodice, Cap- Cap- Capodice. You got it. Dan Marino, Noble Willingham, Troy Evans, Mark Margolis, Alice Drummond, and Udo Kier. That is the cast. Cool. George G. Robinson, the chairman of Morgan Creek Productions, wanted to make a comedy with wide appeal to audiences. After having a treatment for Ace Ventura, Robinson hired Tom Shattuck to write an a script based on the treatment and was on board to direct. Originally considered for the role of Ace was Merck Moranis. <laughs> <laughs> I wait, hang on, hang on. Just just give us Let us sit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I mean I could. It would have been a whole different movie, but uh, I could yeah, I would have watched it. But he turned down the role, obviously. Honey, I shrunk the pets, but that's a different yeah, That's yeah. a wow. different thing. Wow. I like gotcha. that. Yeah. Secret life uh, pets. Also considered were Judd Nelson and Alan Rickman, as well as Rob Schneider and Adam Sandler. Rob Schneider is <laughs> a pet. <laughs> is a pet. Adam Schneider is <laughs> rated PG-13. <laughs> Rob Schneider has crazy hair. <laughs> yeah. what, what sort of antics will he get into this time? <laughs> Rob Schneider is chaos. <laughs> it ain't so great when you get caught with a great white shark. <laughs> They also <laughs> considered gender swapping and going with Whoopi Goldberg. They were like, they just wanted to have this character. They just wanted to have this movie. They didn't really care, man. like if it was a man or a woman, and that's yeah. kind of cool. And the I, s- I could see I think Whoopi the Goldberg. Millennials would have liked that choice. I think so too. As long as I can get to get call her Ace. Yeah. 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 Ooh. There, it was going to be you Alice. Can't call her Ace? It was going to be Alice actually. No, it, if should it was still be Ace. I know. I think it's just fun. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Ventura. Jim Carrey was cast due to his performance on In Living Color. Carey also rewrote some of the script and was allowed to do as much improvisation as he wanted. The original character of Ace was supposed to be more of a bumbling idiot, but Carey said he'd only do the movie if the comedy was as zany as possible and that if Ace was actually good at his I job. I love that. I love that step in. Yeah. He had no power at that point to do yeah. something like that, but I'm glad he did. I really like that, too, as we'll get into. It's like he's, yeah, he is an idiot at some points, but at his job, he is fantastic, yeah. almost better than actual detectives. Uh, the film was shot in Miami, Florida in 1993 on a budget of $15 million, and upon release, it was a massive success. On its opening weekend, Ace Ventura would make $12.1 million and take in $107.2 million overall. Wow. That's what I got for now. I had one other person that uh, lobbied for the role of Ace Ventura, but the producer said he was just too old. Oh, yeah. Jack Lemmon. <laughs> yeah, what? what? <laughs> I know. Jack Lemmon? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that'd be great. They could have at least and introduced that... him as his dad that started yeah. the family oh. business or yeah. something like that. And he, he, oh, yeah, dude. Would that have been cool? Oh, I would love that. Could you Love'd see Jack, Jack Lemmon. Lemmon with that weird hair on top of him? Yes. Uh, okay. I, I mean, that's <laughs> fine. It would have been a fun cameo of being his dad, and then he shows up and has the hair. That would have been fun. Yeah. I would have loved that. I'm into that. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Well, we know you got at least one friend out there who loves this movie just as much as you do. Hit the little share icon on your podcast app. Directly send this to him and say, listen to this, you idiot. Just listen to it. It's awesome. These guys are hilarious. Sharing's the best way you can support this podcast. You can also go to confusedbreakfast.com, grab some T-shirts, check out our movie ratings, do all kinds of fun stuff. And finally, if you're not, uh, you know, if you're caught up on all the episodes, you want more, you're like, oh, I want more. We have a Patreon that has a bonus weekly audio episode every single week and there's a backlog of like 80 hours waiting for you you go to patreon.com slash confused breakfast you sign up you get all that plus more there you go that's two work weeks two straight work get weeks in of like stuff to listen to oh yeah my gosh. yeah i'm just saying Boom. put okay. it in perspective wow. that's what we do here wow wow <laughs> all right up next we got aj who does the research for us gives us the ratings reviews of this movie what do you got man well we're gonna need our high fiber oh yeah Pet food because this is pretty acidic. The tomato, tomato meter. meter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow to get there. We'll get Gross. It. Grain free. Grain free. Yeah. Fiber. Forty eight percent. That's a splat right no. there, friends. Guys, that's pretty low. That is the same critical rating on Rotten Tomatoes as Red Dawn. Weird. 
Fifty-seven uh, percent was the audience score, so a little bit higher. Yeah. Still, still not great. Um, and IMDb comes in at six point nine. So that's how you know it's a bad movie because it's not because <laughs> it's below a seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, automatically bad. Well, p- picture this. So we've read all those movies that are sevens for you. There's a million of them, and they're all like, yeah, those are those are really solid movies. Those are just movies. Here's the six point nines of movies we've done, where it's like you can find issues with them, right? Cutting Edge, Burbs, Rad, Hocus Pocus, Top Gun, Ace Ventura. Like Burbs, it's, no. it's the it's the slightly like just below <laughs> yeah. the Wayne's World or the Cool Runnings, yeah. you know, just slightly below it. It's just not quite there. Disagree with the Burbs should not be on there. Just Fair saying, enough. yeah, people are idiots. Well, uh, we've got some some uh, critical reviews coming in here. Uh, the Washington Post did give it a ninety out of a hundred. Wow, a riot from start to finish. Carrie's first feature comedy is as cheerfully body as it is idiotically inventive. Hmm. So pretty good. I like that. Is what she was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so uh, Los Angeles Times, Chris Willman, 80 out of 100. He's so over-energized from the start, you keep thinking he'll wear out his welcome pronto. An hour and a half later, his lunacy is still hard to take your eyes off of. Yeah. So I think... Yeah. Yeah, that's an 80 out of 100. He liked it, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Roger Ebert disagreed. <laughs> Chicago Sun-Times. Raji gave it a 25 out of 100. That's like a quarter of a thumb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I found the movie a long, unfunny slog through an impenetrable plot. Kids might like it. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, I just need to say this. This did get a zero out of 100 by Entertainment Weekly. Uh, Owen, not... Zero? Not, wow. uh, But Owen Gleiberman. Carrie suggests an escaped mental patient impersonating a game show host, and what's what's worse, his hyperbolically obnoxious shtick is the whole damned show. Zero out of a hundred. I guess his thing. I guess Jim Carrey just doesn't work for him. So, which is like, weird. if you're saying zero out of a hundred, that means you literally stone faced the, the whole, whole movie and thought n- not one f- bit even made you go. Well, that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, nothing. Which is a complete lie. That's not possible. Nothing brought you out of it. Nothing like, at least made you go. Oh, that guy's actually a pretty good actor. Like, yeah. I don't really like this movie, but man, he's he like, carries the entire movie. He's, he Jim carries this entire movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Jim. <laughs> he Jim's huh? this whole movie. Huh? Yeah, no, huh? no, 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 uh, no. I don't feel like that's uh, worth uh, it. All right, all right. <laughs> it is there though. You play your cards right. Yeah. <laughs> don't go dying on me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ten out of ten. Ace Ventura rules. Club Ridgely with a Z. Rules. Jim Carrey is an impressive character. So many laughs and the absurdity somehow manages to work. A true legend at the top of his game with some great hair. All right. Uh, Another 10 out of 10. I have exercised the demons. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Check your brain at the door and just enjoy it for what it is. Slapstick humor at its finest and some of the greatest one-liners. Would you like a cookie, son? I don't know that last... <laughs> that's one of the greatest one-liners. Is that is that <laughs> one of them? Is that one of them? Because I, I guess I actually that's don't know what that's from. I don't. Weird. Uh, mm. I'm just gonna get this out because I'm sure it will come out later on uh, into the movie. This yeah. is a one out of ten, and it's simply titled "Guys Transphobia." Yeah. It was super funny in the first half of the movie. I honestly thought I was gonna give it a ten star rating, but then all the transphobia happened. That wasn't cool. That wasn't cool. So shouldn't you have given it a five? Y- yeah, like a half. No. Yes. I I I, I feel it. like you're you wanted a reason to give it a zero. No, I think just because of that, it should be erased off the planet Earth. And yeah, it, we should actually go. We should find out a way to go back in time to have it unmade. To nearly thirty years ago, and just see if we can make unmake this. Okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's Let's what I'm get saying. him on it. That's what I, I I feel like this person has a valid point. We're gonna have to John Connor this Jim Carrey. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll give you one last <laughs> one, guys. Two, two JCs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> two cool. JCs. Jesus Christ. A couple JCs. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> we can't bring this into it. <laughs> we can only tackle the one. The Bible says. We can only tackle one <laughs> issue at a time. One out of ten, guys. Wish I'd walked out. And this is the most recent thing I've kind of seen on this. What year? Uh, 2022. I wish you walked, walked out, out of your... what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're sitting on your fucking recliner. 
with Doritos. And I put my <laughs> house for sale after I watched I this wish movie. <laughs> <laughs> These are demons I couldn't exercise. <laughs> my house is haunted with Ace Ventura now. <laughs> with Ace Ventura. With Snowflake. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. I should have walked out of and my own house. <laughs> that which counts wrote... It's the only movie in my 50 years that I've ever just about walked out of. Yeah. These days, I would have walked out. <laughs> Life's too short for garbage like this. So is walking out in, in 2020 in our age that we are now, is, is, is just hitting the back button <laughs> on your Roku yes. remote just walking yeah. out of a movie? Going, oh, Stranger, we'll watch Stranger Things yeah, Stranger again. Things, fine. Yeah. Yeah. I got up to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> A little hard for me to get up these days. Yeah. You know what I mean? What a fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) I hate that guy. Is that a guy? That's a guy. Uh, We don't know. We assume so, (laughs) uh, but don't assume anything. Correct. Be careful. Be be careful. (laughs) We're we're learning. (laughs) Well, before we step into the scene by scene breakdown, you've probably been watching our YouTube channel. You've been seeing the glasses that we've been wearing. Sometimes we all got them on. Sometimes only Sean's got them on. But we've been wearing Felix Grey glasses. If you don't know what they are, this company makes blue light filtering glasses that filters out all the harmful blue light that hits our eyeballs every day. It's just like computer screens, iPads, gas pump machines. <laughs> it's like it's like you go to Quickstar and they're like, watch my screen. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, it's true. Do you need that a car wash? Light. Would you like a receipt? Only valid at this location. Cats or dogs? Did you know that <laughs> Matthew McConaughey has a podcast? We learn all about it today. <laughs> yeah. uh, the blue light is everywhere. You can read up all on it. There is some, some harmful effects of what this light does to us. And we're looking at it all day long. So Felix Gray made some very comfortable, normal-looking, stylish glasses that protect our eyes from the damaging effects of this. Um, it's like no secret. We love him. We've been talking about these guys forever. I have two pairs. I got a Nash. I got a Volta. Um, the Volta is the one I wear. Like when I, I, I'm a contacts guy, true and true. Like I'm never going to risk like, oh, no, my glasses fell off and they broke and now I can't see anything. Like, yeah. I'm just going to keep my contacts in my eyes. But I have a pair that I wear, like, when I'm just sitting at home that I can pop on and off when I'm on the computer. Then I've got my pair I'm, I'm wearing at night when I'm laying in bed looking at my phone. I honestly love these glasses. Um, the fact that you, you go to a Walgreens and you see, like, the $10 pair that you can just, like, yeah. break <laughs> and oh, you can, like, yeah. peel a film off of it. And it looks like you're that old guy with, like, Color changing lenses, like it's just got a tint to it. <laughs> Accidentally peel that off, thinking it's a sticker. Yeah, yeah. you don't yeah. want those. These these are these are very very nice glasses that you don't even know you're wearing some sort of filtering on. They're completely normal. You can reach out to us about any type of fit style color options. We'll tell you what we got. Uh, I think you're really gonna like these things. I know a lot of our fans have been buying some. They've been loving it. I just think it's like something. We're not trying to sell you on this. Like this company legitimately is making some. Some cool things that affect us in our everyday world. So check them out. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash confused. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash confused. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. I say go do it. Yep. See don't the be, future. Don't. Go for don't, it. No, no, I was going to say don't be a bird. Call the nerds. Yeah. What, what is it? I'm not good at these slogans. Don't be a nerd. Look for the bird. Yeah. Uh Show them, Sean. It, you see the future. <laughs> <laughs> they still haven't called us back about our slogan nah. option, so we're working on it. Do you have a bird on yours? Oh, yeah, right here. Is it right there? Yeah, don't worry I about love it. that. Okay. <laughs> well, boys, what do you say we <laughs> take on the case of our lives? Everyone's out to get us. No one believes in our abilities, and the clock is ticking. But with this outfit and hairstyle, along with the most confident personality of all time, we'll surely get the girl... <laughs> And solve the case. All righty then. Yeah. G- okay. Give do it better. All righty then. AJ. All righty then. All righty then. Here we go. So the movie begins with our hero Ace Ventura, a pet detective, rescuing a stolen dog from an angry man. The dog's owner, an attractive young woman, gives Ace his reward and then some. (laughs) That night, the Miami Dolphins mascot, a trained dolphin named Snowflake, is stolen. 
The Dolphins' head of operations, Roger Padactor, and chief publicist, Melissa Robinson, are instructed to find the missing snowflake before the upcoming Super Bowl, so they hire Ace. Ace goes to the stadium and takes a look inside Snowflake's tank and begins his search. This is why you do FedEx. They deliver on the Purple Promise. They don't, they don't do things like this. Where they, they don't toss it against the wall. They don't play soccer with it or anything like that. But did you notice the it was like HPS or something it, like that? Isn't it just upside HPS. down? It's it's like that's UPS upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's so pretty good. good. <laughs> that's pretty freaking good. The, him, him immediately, like this is the way this movie needed to start out, yeah. right? Like picture you're seeing this for the first time. You've never, you don't know who Jim Carrey is. You know nothing about this movie. People just said it's great. This is how it needed to start. With his pure physical genius comedy, the like I'm a soccer player growing up, so when he does that weird little dummy move and he like sidesteps, <laughs> he sidesteps the package. Like he's a brilliant genius, yeah. Yeah. and every little movement and facial thing that he does is just so well planned. It's so perfect. Yeah, he's unbelievable. It's yeah. ridiculous. I I don't know if you get such. Uh, I don't know. We'll get to it later, but there is a scene in this movie where it is one of the best comedic things ever put to film, <laughs> in my opinion. And it, it's saying a lot for this movie because, I mean, what say what you want about it, but no matter what, he carries this fucking movie. Yeah. Well, he, and he carries it, kicking it down the hallway. Yeah. Uh, it. He, you can tell they just put the camera <laughs> on him. He did his thing, and. He, like he said, he must have said something along the lines, I'm going to get there. Yeah. You just need to wait for me to get there because I'm going to, I'll get down the street. I'll get down the hallway. He gets down. He does like that, like <laughs> over the head thing. <laughs> it hits his hat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that is the kind of stuff that you can't write. You can't no. write that that package no. is supposed to hit his hat after he does a, a crazy, weird, little, fun soccer circus yeah. kick you can't, thing. You can't write that. Yeah, you, you can't do that. And you just have to let this man with his genius that only he can do, really, just do it. Just let so him do it. Sometimes the world is a beautiful thing, and the, the serendipity of this podcast sometimes uh, is beautiful. I Randall know. Cobb. Two there movies is in a row. Again. Are you kidding? How, guys? I, I like, had this guy's face in mind like forever since like watching this movie but watching i watched raising arizona and then this you and didn't I'm like, realize it was like the same i thought guy. you planned it no i literally thought for like a second i was like but there's no way he was gonna base it around randall cobb <laughs> no <laughs> like, yeah this is my randall <laughs> cobb double future <laughs> It's, it's just a fun night. <laughs> it took a Real lot. fun time. Fun man. night at the movies. I had to gr I had to run through his IMDb to find two two <laughs> movies I could tolerate. But yeah, I found it. <laughs> but it's this golden. is this is how I see. Whenever I see just a random dog on the street, I'm just oh Joe Boo Boo oh Joe Boo Boo oh Joe Boo Boo. Oh, oh, I fucking love what that. lovely dog you have there, <laughs> sir. Do you mind if I pet it? <laughs> I don't care. Oh, and that's God. good enough, sir. <laughs> I'll take it from here. He's Apparently, like, his two black eyes were real. Of course they were. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. Apparently, like he he just showed up on his call day, and they it was just like, assumed it was a, a fight at the bar. And he's like, "Yep, it was." Basically. <laughs> anyway, what do I do? Yeah. I'll just go over, just stand over there. Uh, be an asshole to a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Put on these Reeboks and be rude to a dog. <laughs> so, so normal life. Got yeah. it. I don't know if he's really rude. I don't know either. He, he seems like a hard, gruff man. Maybe he's actually a dog lover. He just gets into bar fights. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know, you're humanizing the goons here. Yeah. Like uh, th this guy that Think Randall Tex Cobb is playing. Like, there maybe maybe he used to be married to said gal. Has to have been. Yeah. And there had to be something. And maybe she like left him for some crazy weird rich guy and like mistreated this man. And this was his dog. What if this was his fucking dog? And he's like, I'm getting it back. Yeah. Look, you know, I, I, and yeah, sorry, the rich lady hired him. It's an I'm keeping the dog situation. Yeah. I love my dog. You guys know how much I love my dog. The yeah. obnoxiousness that I kind of miss him in the new studio. Oh, Honestly, my gosh. Yeah. I'm sad he's not here. But there are still going to be times when you're going to be like, would you just go lay down? Like, you need to stop. Oh, yeah. You know, you're going <laughs> to like, dude, uh, and like. <laughs> Because uh, I talk to him like he's people. Yeah. Because yeah. he is to me. He is. He is real. Um, and <laughs> he has his own personality. But then it's like, get away from the door, dude. Get away. Dude, come over here. There's yeah. nobody at the door. I said get. 
Come like, lay with me. I said get away from the door. Huh? <laughs> and you know what? If I picked up if you, what I, <laughs> what you if I was... got my dog and it was a stuffed animal, I'd be so terrified. You wouldn't even I'd feel so scared. You wouldn't even say I got got by the HPS man. No. You'd be like, what is real? Yeah. D- did I do drugs like, just now? Like, what's Was this wrong? dog real the entire time or not? Uh-huh. What is actually wrong in my life? Yeah, I'm grabbing That's a fucking bat, and I'm doing the same thing that yeah. Randall Tex Cobb did to Ace Ventura. Don't you yeah. dare. Yeah. If somebody my came dog. In, my, in my house and stole my cat, Sergeant Meowensty. If, if, if somebody took my dog, it's open season. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Sorry, and yet we're meant to believe that this guy's a yeah. bad guy? Yeah. By the you way. stole his dog? And fast forward... Four and a half minutes past a great chase scene. Really great chase yeah. scene. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, guys. A lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and by the way, one of my favorite moments, and which I, it's, it's actually, guys, if if you guys help us, you know, take this full time as this podcast, I'll be able to live out my dream, and be able to look at my dog Scout. You've probably seen him in some Patreon videos. If you want to be a part of our Patreon, please go join. You'll see pictures. Cookies, but. It, I'll be able to live out my dream and look at Scout while he's riding shotgun and say, hungry fella, and pull out <laughs> an ashtray full of dog food, fresh dog food for him. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll be able to do that. That is my dream, to have that for my dog. I want that so bad, okay? I want that so bad. I want it so bad. We, <laughs> You know you can do that, though. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> we need about 200 more Patreon. Yeah, that's true. true. I, we need to double our Patreon to get to, to dog food money. Yeah. So. We've all got the uh, things we want in our life here, okay? <laughs> but anyways, fast forward t- past a wonderful a wonderful chase scene. Um, and you get to humanize the goons. Uh, this woman was more than promiscuous enough to just go ahead and offer something up of taking off his pants. We're assuming that meant she did not have to pay the ransom. Uh, we're assuming so. It might have been worth technically the the ratio of what she was offering to what she gave is probably about the same thing, yeah. if you want to look at it that uh, way. And I'm just saying, like, she's so willing to, like, we don't know what happened between her and Randall Cobb. No. You know? He's a real person. I, <laughs> we should <laughs> let the people know that we have we have had to say goodbye uh, to Scout and AJ Studio, we have moved into a proper new studio with our friends LAS Media. Scout's group. still alive. No, Scout uh, is there. Yeah. We, we we actually left behind. <laughs> we left behind a we left behind Scout at the old studio. We also left behind an entire colony of fruit flies. Yeah. Yes, that we're going to move on to a new, hopefully new species of fruit flies that yes. we're going to create in the new studio. Yeah. So yes. a lot of things are different now. We've changed. Things are different. Yes. Animals. <laughs> Animals. I love I love when he gets back to his. Uh, uh, apartment and he's he takes the leaf and just goes by yeah. his his landlord's <laughs> place he, i never noticed he's got a pile there's of a, whole, there's a huge <laughs> pile of them. that's all he fucking does is just every time he goes home first time i noticed that he's got a pile of them right there and you've got the landlord who is uh played by mark Mo- margolis who is hector salamanca in breaking yeah. bad that was a mind blower to me because you don't when I watched Breaking Bad, I wasn't like, oh, that was the landlord from Ace Ventura. But now, after watching Breaking Bad, you go back, you're like, oh. Yeah. What, a, what a different role. Yeah, you know? absolutely different. But like, still the same punchable face. I'm not going to hit the button. Someone can yeah, be allowed to if they not want yet. to. But I, 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 he's, he's there. Yeah. Ventura. Like, how do you even get that gravelly of a voice? Satan? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I think Satan? Al- also oh. when he's, I hear animals in the ace. Like his gravelly, weird voice, like the guy, the bad guy from The Crow, it seems. Yeah, I got, I am, I am banging on the walls and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't oh, think Christian Bale. I don't oh. think he, I don't think he says stuff like that like I do all over, over and over. But um, I, I think that if he needs money, he could take this animal summoning trick that he does in his own apartment. He's like, oh, and they all come flying yeah. out out of crevices and everything. I think he could take that to the stage and yeah. actually make quite a bit of money doing that. Why didn't he just become an animal trainer? Yeah. yeah. Think about just in real life, how long did it take to make that actually happen for the cameras? God. Oh God. <laughs> think about that. And so they did it. Yeah. They figured it out. So, yeah, had he actually had that talent in real life? There you go, man. You're on the road with the circus. Yeah. You got to have, like, people hiding behind things, like, holding, like, birds, like, just just fucking chill. Just, just wait. Just chill. And, like, until, like, there's a cue and you can be like, go, go. And one fucking bird doesn't and do what it's supposed to do. And one doesn't do it, you got to restart everything and everything they knocked over and everything that they crapped on. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, yeah. It's uh, the. I, I always thought it was funny. I never understood why he did like the the hard key jiggle yep, thing. Yep. And like, <laughs> yeah. he trained them. He trained them. Yeah. It's the you're hearing this. <laughs> Yeah, I never noticed that. <laughs> Come on. Three times. Why don't you go in? Snoop around. Snoop around. Snoop around. <laughs> <laughs> he did. His face. I will say this. I say this about every Jim Carrey movie. Is just like go back. When you've already watched the movie and you've seen it a million times like we all have this movie. Go back and watch it, but only focus on Jim Carrey. Yes. Because yeah. there are many points in all of his movies where he's not, he's not what you're watching, but he's in the scene. And he's always doing something unbelievably hilarious mm. with his facial expressions. And yeah. how that was one of them where he goes, go on, snoop around. And the landlord kind of walks in and, and his face changes and he kind of like he kind of like sniffs him as he walks by. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't <laughs> see that unless you're paying attention. Yet yeah, he kind of looks at what he's carrying or something yeah. like that. It's the Mike Myers that we've talked about in the past. Yes. Of like he's always on. Doesn't matter always. if the camera's on him, but he's always on. Yeah, and it's it is it is really phenomenal. It's like they're assuming that there's always a close up of him. Yes. Yeah. 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 The camera is always right on their face, and no matter what, that's the shot they're looking yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. It's very very good. I did have an issue too, a continuity thing where they they we meet Melissa and Roger Predactor. Uh, the dolphin gets stolen, which by the way, they're we're assuming they just won. There's two weeks to the Super Bowl, which means they just won the the championship game for their conference right which means we're assuming that maybe there's some sort of security guards if we're two weeks away from a super bowl and they just walk in and take a dolphin regardless whatever but then they show the stadium the next morning yeah They're like here's the stadium here's where here we're here's where we're at here's where the home office is and then they show them predactor and melissa and they're in like a 50 story high rise yeah. you ever notice that oh like, yeah you're looking out and you're like why why are we in this high rise when you just showed us at the stadium? Yeah. yeah. Why couldn't we just figure that out? Why why did we have to make it happen like that? Yeah, true. It's it's like this whole set thing like you just have to it's, oh, do we just need to set up the sets. Yeah. By the way, are they going to play at do they yes. they're going to play at the Miami they're gonna Stadium? They're going to play in then? Miami Stadium, which was not a thing back That's then. That's not right? a thing. It's it's got to be neutral ground, right? Yes, it's always a neutral ground. Well, I believe. recently that's it's happened. I but think, it was but by pure happenstance, right? Yes. Yeah, I think they choose it like year, yeah, a year in advance or something like that. Okay, I don't know, but yeah. but if it, you know, if if the if that team is lucky enough to get to the Super Bowl, then yeah. it's still there, you know. So gotcha. it could be a home game for somebody. I also had to look up if the Dolphins ever actually had a dolphin in the stadium. <laughs> yeah, apparently from '66 to '70, they actually did have a dolphin. Like in a small little tank, and so it was just like not the, good. What was the, its name? Slippy, slappy, S- Slippy Simpson, Swanson, Samsonite. Swanson, Samsonite. <laughs> it was Samsonite. <laughs> so you mean, so you mean to tell me, in the worst possible years that they could have been housing an aquatic animal? Yes. is when they were housing an aquatic <laughs> it's, animal. It's correct, is what I'm trying. <laughs> Fantastic, to say. Yeah. Yeah. awesome. Yeah, I bet the tech was great back then for water filtration and yes. all the things that uh, they were apparently doing. Apparently, what happened is like ultimately the dolphin just got really sick and ill and stressed out. And you like, don't okay. fucking. Apparently, say. they Weird. don't. They yeah. can't really survive <laughs> in in chlorine. Water. They need. So I read somewhere that dolphins need like thirty feet wide by thirty feet long by six feet deep at a minimum. Otherwise, yeah. they get depressed. Otherwise, they are de- they they swim like fifty to sixty miles a day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and these are intelligent creatures. They are the just, they are the beastlas of, yes. of dolphins. Yeah. They're out there just fucking too. Like yes, they're yeah, just oh yeah. sexual sex. creatures. Oh yeah, man. they like to have sex with it's us. Super yeah. weird. Apparently, oh, awesome. Yeah, the the mid century like it's wood what I hear. paneled tank apparently just wasn't enough for this dolphin <laughs> to hang out in. And, yeah, super strange. It did have a conversation pit though, so that was kind of that's tight. great. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it could only talk to itself, yeah. but. <laughs> there was no one to have a conversation with in the conversation pit, but yeah, they had it. I love when he gets down in that tank and he's Fuck. like, oh, wait, wait, what's he saying? He's, if I'm not back in five minutes, wait longer. Wait longer. <laughs> his, his, when he gets up to that camera, the wide and, angle. And, d- and the wide angle with his face, like you can't, I, that's when I try to picture anyone else in this type of role. Yeah. And these stupid little throwaway gags just don't even exist yes. when someone else is in this role. How many? How many of these gags, or how many of these like physical things, uh, up even even just up to this point, did you guys try to recreate as kids? A, a thousand times. I can't tell you how many times I did like the uh, like when somebody you just told walk. Me, somebody told me to like look at something, and I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> or or the uh, or the whole the whole oh, 
People are really friendly around here. <laughs> While meanwhile, I'm full well not knowing. I'm what was ten even years old. Doing this whole maneuver while Ace Ventura is getting down. We're assuming that she's <laughs> tying his shoes. Or yeah, something that's like all that. she's yeah, doing. That's just all it was. Tie the shoes and tucking his socks and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> whatever I, else you do sexually. <laughs> I have to ask you guys a question. My mind was blown this weekend. So when he's in the tank, the reporters show up, and then they're like, "No, no, no, we got to go away. You can't see Snowflake tonight." And then the reporters go away, and then he's like looking in the filter, right, and he finds the stone. Right. I'm watching this going, oh, yeah, cool. I rented it on Prime, even though I own the DVD. And then I go, wait, wasn't there? What, didn't he pretend to be a trainer and talk in like a Swedish accent? And so I go, I pop in my DVD, mm. and there's a whole scene on my DVD in the movie that was not on the Amazon Prime rental. Huh. He gets out of the tank, and he pretends like he's the trainer. You know, when he's like, do you know him? Do you call him at home? Do you have a dorsal fin? And he's like, go away, go to the conference. Go. Do you do you guys not know what I I'm talking about? I have never seen that at all. It was oh, in it was man. in the the version that I watched as a kid. This was the part of really the movie where he comes out of the tank and pretends he's a trainer to get the reporters to go away. Well, I've never and, seen that. And I popped in my DVD and it uh, is there. Yeah. However, I watched Prime and it was not there. Huh. Wow. You have no recollection of this scene. That, no, I not at all. I don't think that he's, I do. Really. I'm he's, shocked. He's apparently yeah. a trainer. He calls himself like Heinz Get Velvet or something. Is this he? a Mandela effect? People out there, tell us. No, it's I just I I re-rented it today. Yeah. 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 I spent three ninety nine again <laughs> to then go, okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> that scene was not there. Then I popped in my DVD and it was there. Your sanity was worth the four bucks. It was because I, worth it. I had Thanks, to have, Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I had to have watched this on VHS and that was not on there. It's it's I guess it's 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 not it's as weird that it's on the DVD because they probably would include that. But in the in but the it cut, wasn't, it wasn't a deleted right. scene. Like this was the movie. I hit play. Like on in it. the actual cut. Yes. Maybe it's like, because I've never. I don't think I've ever watched it on TV. Because it could be they usually put like deleted scenes in, like Goonies, with, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. Just just to make the runtime longer. I don't know. Yeah, I've never seen it. Weird. Wow. Yeah, I'll send you the footage and Do see that. if it even makes sense. But I guarantee there's about half of our listeners out there that are like, yeah, duh. I'm totally interested. That uh, scene. And yeah. the other half are probably like, what are you talking about? The thing is, is I need to see it. And once I do, I'll you be able to tell really you remember. definitively, I do. Re- I have seen this. and then I'll, or, or I'll tell you, nope, have no recollection like, of this. Go, go to the conference. Very, go away. And then, and then, I have and then, they, feel like then it switches that. to them walking away, and then he's at the filter oh. getting the stone. Is essentially okay. what it is. So they, okay, so they kind of right? they re-edited it kind of around that. Yeah, stuff. interesting. Cool, uh, cool. One one more note on just like his performance, uh, like especially in that with the camera, the wide angle. It's it's a testament to him being brilliant at comedy, obviously, but it's also a testament to him like knowing what kind of camera being equipment aware. he's working with, right? Because obviously he's like the director's probably okay. It's a super wide angle. He's like, okay, gotcha. I can be here, I can be way over here, you know, and still be in frame. I point. just think that that's uh, very important for a performer just to be like, just to be aware of like what lighting is on him or what, what lens they're using right now. So he is in frame, you know, uh, just giving him that. Yeah, man. Yeah. So later that day, Ace Ventura stops in at a local police headquarters and interacts with some of the offers to try to get some information. Then he visits his hacker buddy Woodstock to find any information relating to the case. Ace decides to follow a lead to investigate billionaire Ron Camp further and gets into a party thrown by Camp that evening with Melissa. Once in the party, Ace has an eventful investigation of Camp's house. I hit it. Hit it. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking no, about. You go. A- Aguado. Aguado. Aguado yeah. is the punchable face. In this yeah. Movie. The other, the other police that is like. That's treating Ace Ventura like a piece of shit when he comes into the, that police station office. Yeah. He's the worst, and I hate his face, and I hate how mean he's being. And he's like, come on, guys, gang around me so I can make fun of Ace Ventura. Yeah. But, but Ace Ventura has, is, the, is basically the definitive way of like how to handle a bully. Yes. Like, You're okay, right. turn around. He's like, all right, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like, oh, wow, really funny story. Great. Anyway... Boom, yeah. and then just just <laughs> assaults him with, and then I lose about fifty pounds. <laughs> Park in his wife, oh my. you know, like <laughs> like he just he's just bam, ready to yeah. roll. And I love how he handles that bullying situation, and I want to punch the fuck out of Aguado. Yeah, 
Yeah. The only reason I'm hesitant is just, and I don't even have another one, to be honest. But the only reason I'm hesitant is because I think it's mostly um, Finkel, yeah. Einhorn, yeah. at this point, uh, that is doing this, that's creating this mentality for him. Just like she hates him, so he's got to hate yes, him. That's very And true. he wants to please her, so, or w- whatever. Steps we'll, we'll get, on the cockroach. We'll get we'll get to the pronouns. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, I don't want like. I feel like it's a Guado, and I f- yeah, I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with this at this okay. point because I don't have like you said I don't have anything else definitive. I don't either. So he should be punched. I, I will I will just say if I get if as we continue on if something sparks. Okay. Yeah. Br- you're I'll allowed, bring it up. You're allowed. I'll bring to it up. That up. You're yeah. allowed. To but I I do I like that. that. Yes. I do got to say like you got to clear a damn room. When a- when Ace Ventura enters it, <laughs> because it's just he bolts bolts open those doors. And he's like <sighs> his little. He's walked like sauntering in like a fucking tow train. I don't know what that is. Well, did you hear he uh, he mimicked? He he decided that he would mimic his body movements over a bird. A bird, everything. Yeah, it's like everything, like uh, the confidence of a bird, and just like yeah, 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 yeah like it's amazing. It's a lot like of neck movement. It really is really quick. Yeah, and and speaking very his fast. hair too. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I I get behind that. That's I get fun. behind that. For what sure. do you guys think of Sean Young? I do. So I don't know Sean Young from anything else. You know, I I, I, I forgot to look up her career, uh, but I honestly don't recognize her from anything other than this movie i don't either to be honest and i always never really liked her performance in this no no it was uh, it may maybe it's because she's creating such a terrible character yeah it's maybe it's that that effect that like i hate i hate her character so much yeah that you're like oh okay like she's actually really good at being that act at that actress of it but like yeah i i don't know it was like it's okay yeah it doesn't seem Maybe what I'm trying to get as I do, I don't feel she's just getting out acted in her scenes. <laughs> yeah. guy, I guess maybe what I'm trying to say. Yeah. She, um. What was that? It's uh. Was she the androidy person in Dune? Ooh, in the original Princess Irulan? Like whoever she, he like. Uh, I don't know her name, but uh, that's she's in Dune. Mm. I'd have to look. I haven't seen her in forever. Okay. David well, Lynch is Dune. So. She yes, she is. What's Wait, her name? Uh, so she's. I'll tell you. I'll tell you all her filmography here, okay. real, real quick. Just okay. Not all of them, but how years, about real quick? Some years things. Uh, do what year was Dune? Um, Eighty-four. I'll cut out some of this stuff here, real quick. So she was in. Um, Jesus Christ. Eighty-two. Yeah, Chani. Chani. Oh, she was Chani in that. Okay. She was also Rachel in Blade Runner eighty two, but she was Blade also Runner. she was also in Blade Runner twenty forty nine. That's what I was thinking. Not Dune. Blade Runner twenty forty nine as well. Oh yeah, duh. Jesus Christ. As Rachel as well. So they she was the same character in the Blade Runners. Yes. Okay, but, that yeah. makes sense. I was thinking I was thinking Dune because I was thinking he's talking she was talking to Harrison Ford. Yeah. Yeah. But she also. He was in Blade Runner. Blade I See, why do I keep doing it? <laughs> they, hey, Dude. D- Denis Villeneuve Dude. did remakes of both of those. There so. you go. So, yeah. yes, no, Blade Runner. Sequels, whatever. Blade, Blade Runner. Yes, there you yes. go. Rachel. Is but Rachel. even like she goes, like, she goes, who let Dr. Doolittle in? Yeah. And she just kind of goes, yeah. <laughs> like, it's just not, I, just, I don't buy it, sort yeah. of. It's just weird. I can I can see it as, as it, everything is taken over by Jim Carrey, yeah. I guess, in this. So, it, yeah, I, I see that. I think, I think she serves it quite well. She makes me hate her. Yeah, definitely. She, she's a good so antagonist. I'm into that. Yeah. And I think that's that's to the point, is like, if Jim Carrey is going to be the over-actor <laughs> in here, and, and she's <laughs> kind of doing it, too, but... You're not going to match Jim Carrey, so now it makes me feel like, yeah, <laughs> like I I don't like you because you're trying to match Jim Carrey. I don't know; it's yeah. just very strange. But how do we do two movies in in a hundred episodes that have Tone Loke in them? I don't know. <laughs> like, I how hope many movies to- was Tone Loke <laughs> even in? I hope we get to way more. To I, how many was he in? No, I don't know. I because we've I, already hit Blank Check and I, we got Ace Ventura. I like him in this movie. I love, Tone, I love Tone Loke in this movie more than like Blank Check because. He's like a he's like a really likable dude, yeah. you know that he's like and he's just, just kind of like I'm just trying to do my job, dude. Like you're you're coming up messing my, messing up my job, <laughs> like like I just really like that about him in this movie. But it makes you wonder. So like, do you think Ace Ventura used to be a cop? Because like mm. all these guys know him. Maybe 
I think he's just or he such at least a went through nuisance. like like the f- yeah or okay so he's just always popping in yeah like, hey. he, yeah he, he need you need to have some sort of contacts with yeah. actual police department okay. people. I think that might be it. Yeah, even like he's PIs. basically a, yeah he's basically a private detective. Yeah, he's he's this he's this PI guy and pri- private investigators always have that like contact in the in yeah. the station. Down at pre- yeah. down at precinct fifty nine. We got the contact. We got, I got a contact down at the station. I'll ring him up, yeah. and then it turns out he's never there. <laughs> but yeah, he's got a contact though. Well, I this is this is another thing with like um, uh, Roger Rabbit. I love this like neo noir kind of storyline. This is basically what it is: is like a, a missing MacGuffin, which is. Uh, a snowflake right now. Yeah, and then it's it's a mystery, a detective kind of thing where you got to unravel all the We're clues. He finds a clue. He gets, you know, he got he has to go to every single person on the team and see if they have the ring. I I think I like it. that storyline gets me in as well as obviously Jim Carrey amplifying that to the nth degree. Uh, did mm. you when when you said you tried to act out things? Did you try to talk out of your butt? Yes. Oh, oh ob- yeah. Of course. Obviously, I do it every night. I <laughs> still, I still try. I put on the closed captions for this, and it's even greater than you think it is because he goes, <laughs> he goes, oh asshole, me, sad, me. You don't necessarily hear that, but it's written out clear as day, sad, me, <laughs> as he's singing out of his butt. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Full sell. What's on this the rating shit. on this movie? BG. Th- 13? I think it's got to be 13. Oh, no, no, no. Is, I think I bet it's PG. I no. feel like... Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> dude, I bet this movie... There's sexual uh, content. Oh, dude, man. but this is the 90s. Yeah, it was 80s when they created the 13. PG-13. PG-13. Okay, 13. fine. God dang it. Dude. I definitely was not 13 <laughs> when I saw this. <laughs> Sad, I mean, you don't know that as a kid. Uh, so they go to uh, watch Cannibal Corpse. Fuck yeah, dude. Ha- hammer smashed face. Let's go. Dude, I remember seeing this being like, what? It, what I, like, okay, so what, 94, I'm listening to like Pearl Jam and Nirvana. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I'm like, what? Trying to find your feelings. Is this? I don't know if I like it, but yeah. I'm intrigued beyond all belief. I love that they put them in there too, but I also read that apparently they were in, they were in for like the entirety of the song. Yeah, like like the, this whole scene was him in the crowd, and it was like four minutes of Cannibal Corpse. Just <laughs> <laughs> yes. and the audiences were like, e- e- "I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I don't like." That but Hammer Smash <laughs> Face is like their most accessible. And song. everybody's like, "Who's most accessible song? I have no clue what you're talking about." Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse. What? <laughs> Mike, as a drummer, did this make you want to wear one fingerless glove? Yes. Okay. I already do. I figured. So. I already do, man. <laughs> it's a hot know, finger, man. It's too <laughs> brutal for that finger. All right. <laughs> it's that that it hand really gets a lot more out. action than. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fingers. <laughs> Speed drumming's all fingers. It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all this. That's <laughs> how you get them blast beats. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And blast beats. <laughs> blast. Yeah, bigger blast. All right. I love I love the inter- the idea of the internet back then too. Like how Dude. how like there's no ads and like there's no like you're trying to read something and you have to scroll and then a pop up happens. He's just like, yeah, I'm on the internet. Yeah. And I'm just scrambling yeah. whaling fleets. It's pretty the good amazing. old days. The good old days so of the is, internet. Is he an, an oceanographer with his layer in the back of a heavy metal venue? We have no venue? clue. This is never addressed on who this guy is. I'm or why into he's it though. <laughs> it's it. it's not important. What's important is that he is doing what he's doing where he's doing it, yep. and I'm here for it. And <laughs> like if we got if he's, I don't know if they wrote that first. Yeah, it's like he's in the he's in the back of a metal club, let's yeah. say, and then they got Cannibal Course. Who are we gonna get to fill the 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 music at the venue? Like what's what's popular today? Uh, <laughs> like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, the kids are listening to something called. Grunge, grunge, grunge. Mm. Yeah, so this is grunge, right? Well, what's what? What's grunge? Man, we don't really know. They got long hair. Let's but get them. But there's a lot of long hair, and it's 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 pretty heavy. They're cheap. It's pretty heavy, uh, to our understanding. And uh, this band, Cannibal Corpse, said that they would do it, and they they would fill the time slot. Yeah, yeah. they we paid them in in Bud Light. Yeah, and and Nintendos. Yeah. <laughs> And Nintendo. Every, we gave them each a Nintendo. Every me- heavy metal person is a nerd. Yes, it's true. <laughs> a gamer. It's one hundred percent true. Completely. <laughs> so they go to. Uh, he uses Melissa. They go to the camp to camps. I like. I think <clears throat> potentially he's also a candidate for most punchable face. Ooh, Ronald Camp, the bil- the billionaire. 
Like it's it's a little creepier now rewatching this of like he's just trying to go after Melissa basically, right? It Camp seems the billionaire, so. like he's really all over her, and he's he even gets defensive when she's like, "Yeah, this is my uh, my boyfriend date, a- Ace Th- Tom Ace." He's like, "Well, are you, well, well who, do I just call him boyfriend, or <laughs> you know?" And then what do you do? You know, like he's very like mad that she showed up to this party with him oh. as boyfriend, and he he's like spending all of his time hitting on her while he's in the bathroom, right? He does spend an excessive amount of time with her yes. while she is there. You're right. And she's a coordinator for the Dolphins? No, she is the um, what is chief it? publicist. So he's a billionaire, and she's the chief publicist And they of know the each other and somehow. And he just and wants a piece so bad. And what's what's his... Is he an, in, he's a, an investor for the, in the Dolphins, or he's like a, he I, has a stake in the Dolphins? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Is that what it is? Because he got the ring. The, right, he had so been he's some, some sort of some sort of stakeholder or owner, sh- owner, owner or part owner or something, or something like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that talk talk about one of the absolute brilliance improv scenes of this entire movie is when they walk through that party oh and he gosh. yanks the cello. Oh on. my yes. gosh, dude! Every time I see that, it's, I crack so hard. It's and it's just so perfectly done because they're clear they weren't playing the song when they were filming this, so they then had to go to the studio and be like, "All uh-huh. right, all right, somebody's got to pretend like somebody's pulling your arm." And then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they got to pull your arm, and go. Rrr. And that's <laughs> so amazing, like him walking through, and and yeah, and like you said, that's an improv yes, move. Yes, he pulls his arm, and then the fact that the idea. When improv happens, and you've got to think about the person who's playing that role as that cellist, you know what I mean? And for him to be, I don't know how to respond right They're now. They're like, don't look at, don't look at the actors when they walk yeah, by. You're playing yeah, music. Exactly. Look at your <laughs> think of that direction that you're given. Exactly, it's like you're yeah. just playing music. All you need to do, all you need to do, is just worry about b- pretending to play music. That we're giving you the music that you're pretending to play. Play it together. Blah blah blah. And then Jim Carrey walks by and <laughs> yanks your arm, and you're like, oh, God, what the fuck? I got to I I get gotta, fired. What did I do? I got to believe that a, a directing point would be Jim Carrey's in this movie. So <laughs> anything's up for grabs for him. Like, Even like, do we know like, that at this point? Even I don't know. your arm is up for yeah, grabs. Th- he, you put him on a set. Even if there's extras or anything, anything's free game, it seems. <laughs> like, and, you, and as a director, you'd be like, okay, so... <laughs> Our before our lead actor is Jim Carrey. He might fuck with you. <laughs> you I don't. I don't know. We're not sure. We're gonna do at least. If five he does, days. we'll give you an extra hundred. That bucks. gives you five <laughs> chances to be fucked with. You have to preface every extra on the set. Jim Carrey might <laughs> fuck with you. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, who? And they're like, just you'll know yeah. by the end of this. When oh, this movie you'll comes know. out, you're gonna know exactly. When he who enters that is. the set, you'll know. <laughs> but it's just so cool. Everything he interacts with. Like, I'm sure there's different takes of him interacting with the wall or whatever, you know? Oh, my gosh. It's, yeah. I got it. It's, it's, it's just so when good. He, talk, about, talk about moves that you did as a kid, the swinging yourself onto the wall. Yeah. The whole sneaking I did that scene. all the time. Yeah, oh, my I, God. It's genius. It is yeah. just him. I got to believe it is. That was not written they just at said, all. They said, put the camera on Put him. a stationary camera on him and let him do his goddamn thing. It's so funny. How is everyone feeling tonight? <laughs> I have to imagine that they also decided. I want to imagine that they put the Mission Impossible theme song afterward. They knew they wanted it in there. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's a t- detective movie, but they put it in at that moment because they're we get we get one shot like for the rights of this. There it is That's when he's scene. sneaking around. <laughs> boom, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> amazing! It's, it's amazing. We y- you just want it so bad. We reviewed Jaws. <laughs> okay. Okay. This shot of the shark in that black water yeah. has to be th- as a kid the most terrifying shot of a shark thing that i've ever seen in my like life it. it scared the entire fuck out of me yeah. when i was a oh, kid and same. still today it's just like it's so jolting it's just that black water yeah yeah because you can't see it's you see it and then he falls in and you're like oh no in jaws we at least get those barrels yeah we're like we know there's a shark there <laughs> this is nothing we that think it's terrifying. a dolphin we think it's a dolphin at this <laughs> yeah, point a sweet little cute oh. dolphin who wants to fuck you like snowflake <laughs> I like these are these little moments that like that you remember as a kid yes. really watching this movie and and you 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 catch it all yummy <laughs> like that kind of stuff it's it catches you again like it it's I always say it hits you right in the nostalgia yep. 
And those are the moments. And that scared moment of when he pops up and he does the <laughs> <laughs> and he falls back in the water, terrifying me. Yeah. It's not snowflake. It's not it's snowflake. Not snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's almost Woo! the same. It's Don't almost like the same there. scene as Jaws at the beginning where they where they were pulling that girl back and forth. Yeah, it was yeah. like doing the same yes. thing almost. And, and what an what an homage. An homage. Kind of. Uh-huh. An homage. Uh-huh. Yeah, dude. The hitting hitting his pocket full of water. <laughs> I did. Come we, on. we did that all the Everybody time. Everybody did it. We we did it all the time when you were a kid. Like you filled, you Woo! put you put water in there, even though you realized that water wouldn't actually be held in your shirt yes. yeah. because it's porous. Yes, of course. But, of, but <laughs> cools but you down you, on you a make, hot day. You make shirts. It, yes, <laughs> but whoosh, I love it so much. All right, so Ace realizes that the person who stole Snowflake would have a 1984 AFC championship ring and begins an exhaustive search to find all the ring holders. Roger Pedactor is found dead, and Ace proves he's a better detective than the police while at the scene of the crime. It's a great montage. You got the Aerosmith so funny. in the background. I could do without that, but yeah, it's a good montage. I, it just it fits for the <laughs> era does. that we are in. It does. But it's a good montage. It, it gets this over with. It shows that he's going through everybody. He's trying all the tricks. Yes. And those are, I think a lot of them were ex or current players at the time. Had to have been. You had Don, Don Shula, the coach, was the guy in the mailbox. Mm-hmm. That his oh, hand okay. went in. I, I, know, I at least recognized him. Uh, everybody else, you got to assume some some pretty fit athletes there. That, I yeah. I just love the fact that he pisses the dudes off so much that he lets him punch him just to find out. Yes, <laughs> he's got like on the indent of his forehead. S- that's brilliant. Snaps him with the towel just to make sure he's got <laughs> yeah. all the di- all the jewels in his ring. Very good. Yes, S- staring at the dude in the urinal too. Yeah. I, you yeah. expected that to go a little differently, and it didn't. You're <laughs> like, all right, that was cool. Yeah, that faking like he's sick and going. <laughs> he's getting autographs. Oh yeah, he's like like a he's kid with pimples. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty fun. And then obviously, then you get into the Roger Pedactor. Like this is this is great because this whole scene. Actually, sorry, right before this, <clears throat> you get a little bit of a a humanizing moment. Mm. Yes, that I dude, I never realized yes. this as a kid until this critical watch when Ace Ventura is just like uh, always making jokes and running around, but. That's when he's hanging out with um, Melissa, Melissa. Yeah. and he's yelling at her. And he's, eh, eh, you, what do you feed your dog? You know, yeah. like, he's but then, miserable. Yeah, you see him in that moment where he goes, ah, oh. and he like it all turns off. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? Hey, Melissa, I'm really sorry about yeah. that. It's such a humanizing moment for this character who's larger than life. Correct. And it happens about once or twice in this movie where. I'm, you got to imagine that was part of what Jim Carrey wanted to put into this role. Mm-hmm. Instead of, you're a bumbling idiot, and you'll right. figure it out eventually. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That he didn't com- need to be there. He completely drops it, and it's kind of shocking. Yeah. To, and it only happens for a little tiny second. But, like, it's not the, hey, Melissa, I'm so sorry that I said that. Yeah. It's, hey, uh, Melissa, I'm sorry I said like Listen, it's I'm really whoa. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It star- and it starts with the dog, even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's yeah, like, he goes, yeah, I know. Yeah, I like her too. Yeah, you know, he, and he's just like, ah, I gotta apologize. You know, he yeah. gets up and he says that, and you're, and yeah, and then when you get drawn into that apartment building, uh, it, it takes kind of a dark turn. It does. Yeah. Man. This is this like turns like <laughs> Lethal Weapon. It does. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. kind of, you know. So I think it's the same song in the background <laughs> yeah. too. Like. <laughs> 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 Where's Riggs? All right. Where is it? They're on their way. I think maybe Ira Newborn did the music for that, too. I'm going to look it oh up. Oh, my God. Hell, yes. <laughs> Please let it be. But it does. This This is a point where, again, it, it proves it proves that he is actually a good detective. Yeah. Like, yes, he is a pet detective, and he finds people's animals, or he recovers them, or it's he just does because he likes pets more than humans. Exactly. He just likes animals more than people because people suck. Yep. And so. No, it's Eric Clapton. Oh, <laughs> wait! What? <laughs> Eric Clapton did the music in that for <laughs> for Lethal Weapon. Oh, Lethal I thought Weapon. you. Oh I no, remember. we knew that. We knew that. It was sl- slow. We made a slow hand joke and freaking. <laughs> yeah, don't you remember? In the but episode, yeah, that the was episode. like episode three. It was. It <laughs> so was you got to go way it back. Was, for it that. was an early one, but <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, Sorry. no, it, it, it's this John is Mayer. this. <laughs> This shows like he is a great detective. He's paying attention even when the yep. the cop is interviewing. But you know, you have to it's it's crazy to think that to take it like a, one step further, the the cop the cop may not have even written down heard scream or something. You know, it all comes down to this like weird this perspective of what you take in. And 
he's trying to take in everything around him, and he walks past, and he hears that little tidbit from the neighbor, and then starts kind of going in and, and looking. And I, I half expected it to be the trope of, well, which side was the glass broken onto? Mm. Was, well, the glass is on the inside, so he wasn't thrown through the glass onto the outside. Yeah. That kind of a thing. Yeah. But, but I really do like that they took it one step further with this, and they start with your answer. This is classic. That's classic, like, who done it and who... Uh, like noir style writing is you start with the answer and then you finish with finding the answer. Mm -hmm. But, but oftentimes you don't really get that with, with writing. And that's why I think there's actually really good, like mystery writing in this movie. I agree. And as he's, like you say, as he's walking by these witnesses, you're getting the information as well. Right. So you are with Ace trying to piece this together and I like how, uh, especially Einhorn out on the patio says, <laughs> "Let the real detectives take it over." It's like, you mean the real detectives that didn't spot the spot of blood on the railing, you idiots? Right. And then she touches it. And with then her touches hand? it. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, come what? On, yeah, dude. she just wipes. It you know what? It is. Wait. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah, she didn't it, freaking it. lick it. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is blood. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. my blood. Damn it! Damn I was it. here. Oh, you Unless she was like covering up for herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just being like, nope, See? that's not blood. And, and yeah. Whoops, I tampered with it. Of course it's got my DNA on it. Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. See? Uh and uh, that's <laughs> fun to think about. Bitch. Oh. <laughs> I like I also I also love the realization of but uh, of of the whole It's like, but ma'am, you said that you heard a scream outside like like this story. It's like you're and certain you're certain. You're certain. <laughs> And he's just basically being an attorney at this point. Yeah, like yeah, defense attorney, yeah. <laughs> and he's like my cousin Benny this right now. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. And he's obviously very smart. Uh, uh, <laughs> so he so let's be real. He actually did that. Basically, like he was oh, he, turning off and turning on his voice. Yes, while yeah, he's yeah, he had to that. have been right. Because that's not a real thing. Like you're not right. going to make your loud voice stop from a double pane. No, right. No. But so like the thought of him being on set while he was doing that. I th- the thought of him doing anything. Yes. Like, how can you not be just busting up? Well, you've never seen this before. You've never seen someone do this shit. He's, he's, and he did it so many times. <laughs> the script probably called for like, hey, you need to show somehow. Or, or like, how would, how would you write in there of like, you need to yeah. show that it's like. Ace shows that it was a double pane glass. Double pane glass. It was glass. probably it. like, it was probably like, you go, look here, it's a double pane glass. And yeah. they'll go, oh. <gasps> oh, my oh. God. He's well, like, you no. can't hear me now. Can't you? You gave me now. Gave me yeah. yeah. It's like no. He decides to sing and do it six times. <laughs> That's amazing. He goes back to his apartment. He gets the girl. But I have issues with this because you know, yes, he did show his prowess there, and he's good looking guy, and he got the job done. He made the cops look like idiots. He's helping solve the case. But come on, how bad does his apartment smell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got a smell. Like, come on, man. I have one cat, and every once in a while, my house is just like, what? Just Where do I live? Once, like, one, several different <laughs> kinds of food. Not even several. Billions different kinds Wet, of food. dry. Wet, dry. Dog, fish, bird, cat. Fish. Live fish. Fish. And penguins. then they have to shit that out. He can't take them outside. Ooh, and he he his, he's not taking them all for walks. No, his chance. landlord will not have that. He will definitely know at that point. They are <laughs> shitting in that house. There's so much. And she is falling in love. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you got to give to Gab. Like we always say, <laughs> got to be funny. Got to talk him in the room. Hey, if you can see through the shit, she might be it. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they say? I think that's what they is say. Is that what the kids yeah. are yeah. saying yeah. nowadays? Uh, look, <laughs> look that up, and I'm hey. pretty sure it says that's what they say. I'm Any millennials sure. listening that yeah. are waiting for us to get to that part eventually, yeah. tell us if that's what they say. Yeah, yeah. 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 please. <laughs> All right, so scene four. Back home, Ace realizes there was one person that he hasn't investigated from the 84 Dolphins, kicker Ray Finkel. He realizes that this might be the person, and before he can warn anyone, Dan Marino is abducted. He attempts to work with Lieutenant Einhorn, but it falls on deaf ears, so he investigates a mental hospital that Ray Finkel used to stay at. Hey, I'm wondering if you can tell me where Ray Finkel is. And a fresh (laughs) pair of shorts. I'm looking for Ray Finkel (laughs) and a new pair of shorts. That's amazing. Th- this whole How many scene. times have you say that as a oh, kid? Oh, a yeah. million times. Yeah. And the, the one of the lines that I say all the time, two of them, I go, yeah. Yeah. oh, look, they're little footballs. Little football. <laughs> and and any time one of my friends or some random person in public, like, you know how you go to a restaurant and there's always the guy 
at the bar, <laughs> wa- like some degenerate gambler watching like the Dodgers and the Brewers, and he's just at the bar, and all of a sudden you'll hear, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm always like, I always go, all right. <laughs> I always go, what a sports what nut. A sports <laughs> nut. <laughs> what's not, huh? She is so, of course, she was in Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah. library, yes. She is she is so, I, Ray ain't coming home. Because he has, <laughs> we all believe that we're like, oh, shit, Ray Finkel is coming back. Okay. Ray ain't coming home. Ray ain't <laughs> coming home. And we've discussed it before too. Yeah, like keep it. That's a bad sign. Keeping the the dead or yes. missing sons. It, I think it's stand by me. Oh the, God. the room intact. Do not do that. Uh, you guys. It's a bad sign. It's not. A Things good sign. have gone wrong with God. that family. And he could, he's like, we left it just how he <laughs> left it. Laces out. Laces out. Everyone. Boop, boop, boop. Laces out. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, it's just so great, and it's weird how all of a sudden now we're like, okay, it is Ray Finkel. Yeah, Ray Finkel is the one that did this, but we still don't know it's Einhorn. So he goes, he he has the scene with Einhorn. Your gun is digging into my hip, kind of a thing. She's yeah. not believing it. Uh, fucking. Then Dan Marino gets actually abducted in that commercial mm-hmm. at this point. Um, so then he goes to the mental hospital, which. Like I know, I know people can have an issue with this potentially, you know, like mocking uh, an illness and stuff like sure. that. But I still like, maybe I'm just like old, or maybe I just really love the scene. But I just, I just laughed so hard at, at his unbelievable acting at this mental hospital. Th- this is what I was saying. I think is maybe one of the best comedic performances of all time, just in this scene alone. And yeah, I, I don't even think. Like, it, I, like uh, maybe maybe insensitivity maybe I don't know I I just see it as comedy, and I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> he's acting in the scene as a character. I don't know, whatever. D- it's 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 important to it's important to, to differentiate. Yes. you know, and th- but to watch him go <laughs> through this and he's sitting there and he decides to go through this entire monologue essentially and then do it in reverse. Come on. It, it, that's it's amazing guys like, it sounded so perfect that you know what i did i do my research for the show i f- i video recorded him going in reverse to then reverse that to see it sounds so good <laughs> that i thought jim carrey would have figured out what it sounds like to say that in reverse oh and, my God. and it did it wasn't yeah. but like that's how much I believe Jim Carrey that yeah. he potentially would have learned how to say he that. He would have wanted to do that. And especially when it gets to the end, he goes, Half time. And he. Half fu- time. <laughs> face plants. <laughs> like he fully commits to <laughs> knocking his face <laughs> into that bench. <laughs> Does the whole. Like, yeah, with the, the water. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, you think about Jim Carrey right now. Think about this is 1994. Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber all come out in 94. Superstar. All three of these movies come out in 94. How how do you get those roles, and how do you prepare yourself for those roles and do it in that sort of a time? Listen to this, too. From 94 to 98, four years Ace Ventura, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, Batman Forever, When Nature Calls, Cable Guy, Liar Liar, Truman Show. Four years. Well, I think in that, I think it's the four years, or maybe even just this year of the movies that came out that he was in. He was the second most highest grossing actor <laughs> next to Tom Hanks. In, ju- in just 94. In like, just 94. Because th- when this came out, they went, oh my God. Yeah. Everyone wanted him. Oh my God, yeah. we are so ready. Well, I mean, like he's just such a testament, and I love every, I love everything he's ever done. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, such a good movie. Like yeah. what a what a flip, and like even when he got to Truman Show, it was like, ooh, this is weird. Like this is kind of different. I mean, like I, I, you cannot overstate how incredible he is. Yeah, and and these are the scenes that really do it for it. Me. Really still, is still to this day. Yeah, still, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's that, it's that good. Where I don't think it'll ever be compared. Like it's it's so him too. Yeah. Like it's I think he's got the phys- physicality and the brilliance and nuance. Maybe not so much in <laughs> nuance in this, <laughs> but he's he's just got that so perfectly nailed down. Yeah. And I don't I'm not sure anybody else can really do it, if if at all, maybe even like him at all. I'm I'm not sure. Jim Carrey is a genius that we would normally see as we would we would think it would have been snuffed out by some sort of premature death 
yeah about correct about sure. tw- uh 15 years ago can you imagine and if in he reality, died in 99 or something like, like that? 20 years ago. Think 20, 20 years ago. 2002. Yeah. If he had just been snuffed out, or, or even a little bit before it, 25 years ago, and snuffed out. And you, you would, we would look back on him in this insane, yeah. saintly way. In reality, in, though, in the movies. only thing that died is his, is his ego. Yeah. Because like of what he's doing now, like yeah, he's yeah. kind of weird now. But like honestly, some things he says, he's got a pretty good point too. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you know, you know. I, and again, I think I made a point about you know Chris Farley. We would have watched this like renaissance happen. This idea, and we got to see it with Jim Carrey, like where he got to take on these serious he roles. He got take to see on serious roles. Adam Sandler take on some serious true. roles. And true, y- you know, Hubie Halloween. Yeah, Hubie. thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, very much. You guys so. gonna finally watch that this year? 100%. Oh, I can't. Okay, good. I cannot. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> even scary. <AJ. laughs> you can't oh, wait. I, awesome. I, I can. Oh, I, I can. can. I'm like, I'm oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> AJ's like, this is shit. I'm like, it's the shit, right? <laughs> 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 Ooh. <laughs> no. Uh, no, yeah, th- but that's what I mean, like, is we're very lucky to have, like, him through these years, and this is, to f- so, to look back at this as the start of what it was, you mm-hmm. know, because it, it really was. This was the start. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, well, let's finish this off. So, Ventura makes the connection that Einhorn is actually Ray Finkel, and he tracks Einhorn to where Marino and Snowflake are being held. After a confrontation, Ace proves his theories and saves the day. Yeah, he does. So, I got a question for you. So... I've thought long and hard about Einhorn, right? So so the kick happens, the missed kick happens in 84. We know that Ray Finkel goes to a mental inst- institution, at least, probably not right away. It probably takes a year or two for that full depression to, to from him living in his house and die, Ray, die, Marino. So maybe like, let's say 86, Ray Finkel goes to a mental institution. We're assuming he's there. For two to three years, so let's say let's say he gets out in eighty nine, then goes through um, a transgender surgery and you know changes who who he is, becomes a woman. Okay. Then that leaves like two years to become like the lieutenant of a police force. I know. True. Like I'm just one. Like that seems awfully fast to be able to just be like I'm the lieutenant. Yeah, because because we. Unless she slept her way to the top. Ooh. Oh. We're expected we're expected to believe that this is the same year the movie was made, right? Ninety four? I, I think we're assuming yeah. that, yeah. We right. have to assume so. Yeah. And so and if if eighty six if is the eighty six eighty four eighty four dolphins. The kick was, so yeah. we're talking about ten years. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it seems like a very, very yeah. like, you know, smashed together timeline right. of, of like how, how we want these things to come about. And don't they have like background checks or anything like that? Background don't aren't they checks. like can I see your birth certificate or can I know what you did previously for a job before this? Why would she wear <laughs> like wouldn't someone be like, hey, is that an 84, 1984 Dolphin Super Bowl ring yeah. that you're wearing? Oh, you're missing a stone. What's up with that? <laughs> Why, well, and, and let's let's be real here. It, it's just like, oh, that's a cool ring. Where'd you get that? Oh, this thing. Oh, don't worry about it. I, uh, eBay. Uh, eBay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think eBay was almost a thing. By yeah, that, well, yeah. I think it was actually like trading and like bays. You had to go to. This old thing, the golf. Uh, I bought it secondhand. I just thought it was pretty. Yeah, and it's just like it's like no, that is a definitive ring. That looks like something that like a large male athlete would have worn. It's yeah. my, <laughs> it's my <laughs> engagement ring. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. To the my police force. Husband got it to to for me. For, <laughs> to me. For to me. For yeah, my <laughs> husband got it to, to me. To engage Go me. Go away. Leave me alone. For me. Uh, but and and so but you're right though. Uh, th- it's a very condensed timeline that they just decide to make happen yes. at this. Maybe point. she had a connection. Maybe he. Maybe yeah. she knew somebody. It you just know, seems uh, weird that she maybe would just choose not to wear that and, you know, uh, in her everyday wear. The uh, the article that he finds at the hospital, the 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 hospital, he um, with the uh, eyes of toners. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It said how I think it says how old Lois Einhorn is like 26, oh, 28 maybe, yeah. or something like that. 20 something, I want to say. But um, if if I remember correct, I don't know. But yeah, it just it condenses down so quickly and it makes it a little bit too easy. The end You're right. Sort of just kind of I guess this wasn't even the original ending they were planning. It was just like, oh, really? I guess it just sort of 
fluidly sort of evolved into okay, maybe it's Einhorn and yeah, oh, uh. and she's transgender and she was Ray Finkel. I guess like it sort of just happened. It does seem really? like really it I feels that way. Right? It does <laughs> seem like kind of like <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like kind of just like a, I don't know. She is a transgender. I, uh, she was the kicker. Yeah. That's it's why she hates Marino. That's why it seems feels a little shoehorned. A little bit. Yeah, you yeah. start to get to the end of this movie, and it's kind of like, yeah. you know, who I I actually just thought of it. Um, we we're talking about Sean Young, and it's like I don't really buy her as an actress. You know who would have been good in that role? Mm. Lori Metcalf. Oh shit. Oh no. Yeah. Lori Metcalf actually would have been pretty awesome. Yeah, in that I like that a lot. Oh she's my like, gosh. She can sort of. She's a great actress, oh, yeah. and so she could really turn that on. That'd be amazing. Yes. Especially back and forth with Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah, I would love to see that. That would have been awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, it wraps up. It wraps up kind of swell, I guess. Yeah. Um, I I really I don't see much of an like I don't I don't really see the issues with everything. I I don't think they make they they do make fun of it like Einhorn is Finkel Finkel is Einhorn they they do touch on it. But I don't really think it's like horrible. In case you missed it, there's like a lot of online stuff from yeah. from younger millennials talking about the the transphobia in this movie. It's like, oh, all the people are grossed out that they kissed a man, and like, but I I have a few things about that. When if you look slowly, there's like one or two female cops that also do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's just the thought of it's just like this person wasn't what uh, who I thought it was. Yeah. You know, like, so this girl cop l loves girls and is a lesbian, and now it turns out she actually kissed a male, and she's like, I'm grossed out by that. What the hell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I can see what everybody's pointing out. They're like, oh, you're just making fun of transgenders. It's like, no, we're making fun of the evil character in this movie. The deception that, the, yeah, that she has brought upon everybody. This character literally fooled this entire city to get to abduct a dolphin and a foot and a star football player yeah. and commit crimes. We're mad at that. We're not <laughs> mad that like she's actually I a don't male. care. Who cares? She looks yeah. great. Yes. She looks hot as fuck. I That's don't care. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, it doesn't matter the like gender regardless. If you kiss somebody that you didn't want to kiss, then like, what that's not a I what didn't the know hell? you were who you were. What like, the hell? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I will go as I think I've said this before. Sometimes if I have enough time before we do a podcast, usually my method is watch the movie with no research. Yeah. Watch it. Do all my research. Start my notes. Watch it again. Finish my notes. And then usually I will listen. I will find another. There's so many movie review podcasts. Yeah. I will like type in the movie and go, oh, that looks interesting. And I'll click on it. And I listened to one about this where one of the hosts was like, outrage just mm. could not believe and and this host said like oh all these people are just standing around making fun of this transgender when someone should have just gone up with a, a towel and said it's okay come on like i know you they ripped your clothes off come on we're gonna take you over here i was like no <laughs> that's a f the fucking evil criminal it's a criminal it's she, a criminal she broke the law <laughs> if so if it wasn't a transgender it was okay right you like, know like then, like just be like it was just the weirdest argument I've ever heard someone she and this this host was like this this movie's a 10 but but because of that like this movie's dog shit like I get I'm I like, get what it. I get it we can't I, do it today I know this yeah I understand there's there's also a definitive uh, just look looking at reviews yeah. and things of when these things start to pop up they start to crop up at a very specific time frame of course just I'm just saying yeah. they, they do like all those reviews that are labeled literally transphobia, yeah, start cropping up at a very specific time <laughs> in life. Yeah. You got you, know? you got to what we do on this show is like a lot of a lot of a lot of insensitive things that have, have oh happened yeah. in media, yeah. like movies, like you know n words, like just casual f words, n words, uh, like casual uses of all of those, you know. Yeah. And that that was the time, the '90s. This wasn't really a thing. Back, it, like it, it was happening, but it's it just wasn't a weird plot device. It's just a, <laughs> it, yeah. it is a weird, and it's like I, I don't know. I think they're not saying even it's okay. Like, yeah, it, but it, it, yeah. it, but it, yeah, it's. What but as I'm watching a comedy <laughs> with with Jim Carrey playing a, a pet detective, <laughs> I don't normally care what happens. I really don't. <laughs> no. And I, I think that I can get over it as soon as it's over. Yeah. yeah. And I think the important thing is that everyone involved in this movie has since gone back and go, yeah, hey, 30 years ago, like, we couldn't have made that yeah. today. Let, let's well. Maybe we probably should have changed that. Yeah. Oh, it, it sucks. We can't go back in time. But, yeah. yeah, times have changed, and we're all 
we've all grown as a human species, and, uh, and we know that we probably can't do stuff like that anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably say, too, though, at the same time, without that, <laughs> we, we can do without that. I think we can be way more Com- creative. Completely. Extremely way more creative <laughs> than just saying, yeah, I was a transgender. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Way more you're, creative you're, than that. Dude, they don't make out. movies. They don't make comedies like this anymore, and I wish they did. I, th- it's it's a, such an outlandish thing. We'll get to it in my final. Yeah, final you're, dude, you you absolutely nailed it. Like, like the 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 biggest crime in this is that <laughs> this is was the plot. <laughs> like, like that's the issue here is that this is just a terrible. They decided plot. to yeah. just <laughs> fall back to this. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. So I mean, that's pretty much about. It. There was one scene that I still laugh at every time is when he gets in the little boat. And he puts his fan in the water <laughs> and goes and goes one foot and then gets out. Like I still laugh at that shit. That's so good. In fact, in fact, you know we haven't even done this yet. Yeah, we haven't even done this yet. I want the I want the little fan. Those old fans we used to have in the nineties. I want to be able to get on a boat and have my own motor. That's all I can think of. I I'm, I want to do his car, but oh god, yeah. What that must smell like as well. Uh. I I think uh, honestly with with the with the Randall Cobb connection I'm gonna go kind of the same similar uh, prop that I had from last week and do his entire wardrobe of, of Hawaiian shirts. I'm Amazing. really I'm really glad we we made it to this topic, okay? Because I want a prop that actually isn't in the movie. Oh. Okay. Now normally it goes back to my ashtray of uh, yeah of the dog, but it's full of dog food. I want the ashtray that is offered to Ace Ventura when he is eating sunflower <laughs> seeds in the office. <laughs> Can I get you an ashtray? Oh, oh, no, thanks. Oh, no, I don't smoke. <laughs> it's a disgusting habit. <laughs> <laughs> I want the ashtray right. that never made it to the desk. And people be like, I don't get it. You're like, you will. Oh, you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say, boys? Is that it for us? Let's hit it. We have dissected this movie with a modern eye. We've stripped away the nostalgia. It's time to give us a modern day rating. AJ, what you got on this thing, man? I still think this is a, an incredibly fun movie uh, to, to watch. I really do. I think it's a very fun movie. And I think that there are parts, it kind of starts getting to, you get, but, however, and as I've said before with other movies, there is a point that you can feel this movie has wrapped up before the credits have actually yeah. rolled. Yeah. So that being said, I still th- I still think it's so funny. I th- I think that that Jim Carrey just exploded into the world with this performance, and I I really actually like a lot of what they did with this movie. And I thought that they wrote a pretty good mystery movie up until a certain <laughs> yeah. point, to be completely <laughs> honest. Yeah. Um. And so that being said, um. I think I think you gotta I think you gotta dial it back and I think I gave this a nine point two initially. Correct. Um and I'm going to I'm gonna finish this at a seven point two. Seven point two, Sean, what about you, man? Yeah, I think um I think I this is a kind of movie like uh, Austin Powers, but with a I think a better lead performance and a more entertaining lead performance than Mike Myers, in my opinion. These this is those two movies are the kind of movies where you throw on just to waste time. Yes. And this is a great waste of time. And I, I still laugh at it uh, 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 most of the time, pretty much only because of Jim Carrey. But I do agree with AJ where it is a kind of cool, fun mystery to follow along with um, up until a certain point. And um, I think it's well made. I think, I think uh, it, like I said, just Jim Carrey, he, he, he knows what he's doing. And this is, this is why you watch it. It's a, just a, it's a taco, as we say, mm. um, for Jim Carrey. Uh, it's a vessel for him. I'm going to say I'm a 6.7. That is an increase from your Austin Powers, and I think that's it. I think you nailed it. Like you take, you take Mike Myers out of Austin Powers, all of his characters, Dr. Evil, Mike Myers away. It's like that's not a good movie. Yeah. You do the same thing with this. You take Jim Carrey out. This is just like not, no one even knows this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a terrible plot. That that is just carried by this man, yeah. and yeah. I think you're right. I could think if if you're giving me, <coughs> if I have a terrible plot that I wrote a script, and you're giving me either Mike Myers or Jim Carrey, I'm taking Jim Carrey. 
because I know that he can take that and take it to the next level. So I gotta, I agree. I gotta go a little bit better than Austin Powers in this, just due to Jim Carrey. So I'm a seven point three five. Executive producer David Gould, who chose this movie directly, says on January twenty seventh, nineteen ninety one, Scott Norwood of the Buffalo Bills took the field during the final <laughs> final moments of Super Bowl twenty five. He lined up the game winning forty seven yard field goal and missed wide right. And even though this movie reminds me of that sad day, I will remain impartial for my modern view. Watching this movie felt as if, if I was stepping into a time machine. I still find myself laughing as Jim Carrey's crazy antics, finally understanding the jokes that went over my head and getting a kick out of my wife saying, hey, isn't that Monica from Friends? <laughs> <laughs> Ace Ventura is absurd but brilliant, crazy but composed, and somehow thrilling. For my modern day rating, I remember my childhood dreams and now, as a 35-year-old, I realize I have crazy hair, Hawaiian shirts, and two children under five, <laughs> making my home feel like a zoo. <laughs> so with these dreams becoming a reality, my modern-day rating has to be 9.1. Nice, man. Also, I have a fan theory that Emilio was so disturbed by the actions of Einhorn that he quit the force, turned to a life of crime, and took on the name Juice, yep. leading him to cross path with one Brian Bonsall in blank check. Yep. Oh, my gosh. 100%. Oh, love it. 100% can. Canon, that is 100% fact. No one can refute that. That is unbelievable. Great, great fan theory. It lives. Right there. So, <laughs> overall, modern day rating, that is a 7.59, which takes us on all the movies we have done so far. 7.59 is just below Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just above The Warriors. Wow, okay. Is where we're putting that technically on our ratings. Yeah, right. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Feels, feels about right. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next Wednesday. We have some more great episodes scheduled for you. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. We hit Great Outdoors. Ooh, wow. All right. Great wow. John Candy flick. Always worth look. a watch in the summertime Patron going Saint. into the fall. Couple That's what I'm saying. A couple of greats in there. Yeah, yeah, man. We also got a voicemail. Call us at 319-804-9596. Leave us some thoughts on the show. Here's today's voicemail. Hey, guys. I just called in to say... How about a good – I'm sorry. I fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, congratulations um, on having a child and being a parent, and y'all should do a movie review on parenthood. And what a great movie to do one on about parenthood is the movie Parenthood with yep. an all-star cast like Keanu. Steve Martin, Keanu Reeves, Joaquin Phoenix. You also have the one and only Rick Moranis. Y'all should review it. It's quite a funny movie, and okay. I don't know if you guys seen it or not. Um, but thanks again, five star. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> have you guys ever seen Parenthood, the movie? I can't tell you. I'm that. not sure. Okay, then we may have to. I may have to bump that into my. I've never seen. I mean, it. that's a no. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> no, we may have to. Like you heard that lineup of cast. This yeah, is a, this that is an sounds old, great. Old, very interesting movie that I believe they based maybe the TV show off of that was kind of happening recently. Mm. But yeah. That is definitely worth uh, a watch. I nice. Think. Thanks right. for calling in, man. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks so buddy. Much. Thanks for the well wishes as well. AJ, let's take us out, man. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. Make sure you leave us a review while you're listening on any podcast platform that you're listening on. Five stars, that's what we want. But you can also find us at Confused Breakfast anywhere on social media. And anything else, it's confusedbreakfast.com. Same place. You go there, you can find some merch. You can get some shirts. You can get a hat, I think, apparently. That's what I see. And some coffee mugs, some stickers, whatever you want. Just go to confusedbreakfast.com for I, your merch. I believe that website is brand new as of the time you're hearing this. So you can check out all of our ratings, see Ooh. the new website. You go to patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast. You can get bonus audio content, private Discord service, voting on upcoming movies, and so much more. There you go. Wow, it's come to an end, hasn't it? So that's it for us, guys. Last episode ever. Ever. Well. Well, it was a good run. There we we ended on Ace All Ventura. Right, we ended on Ace Ventura. <laughs> Sorry if we pissed off any millennials out there, but you know we love you because we preach it's love true. here and we love everybody. So it's true. I don't, I don't need care to make what sure you do. That we know we that. don't give a fuck. I don't care. Just write a better plot. Yeah. Just write a better <laughs> that's plot. That's really what we're saying. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Goodbye. Okay, bye.